All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a, a very, very special edition of the Blue Abroad Show. Uh, tonight is it's all it's, it's all uh, it's all lovely tonight. Um, bittersweet. Uh, we're going to have a bit of a celebration for the great Kate Simpson. And I, I want to start by first of all, I should probably just introduce Jono here. Jono, uh, first of all, welcome, mate. Thanks for having me back, Terry. Um, what a week. What a day. Just, yeah. The it, news, uh, the news, it, it, I mean, it, it, it was coming. We knew it was coming. We didn't know when. Um, we didn't know if it was going to be, you know, this year. Some of us were maybe holding on for some hope for next year. Um, rightly or wrongly, the decision's been made. Um, but this isn't about the, the micro. This is about the macro. Um, and uh, for it, those of you at home, it's all love tonight. It's all love. Yeah, that's right. This this will be somewhere where we may we may have tears tonight. Very much so. We, we may have many tears tonight. Uh, tears of joy, tears of sadness. But uh, this is the place to to get together. So for you guys at home, Jono Jono messaged me earlier today, and he said, you know, maybe you should do like an emergency fan cam. Um, show for Simo and I, I said you know well, well, yeah may, maybe tomorrow night and then I thought about it well, why not tonight Jono mate fabulous idea thank you so very much for, for thinking of it and reaching out and, and making it a reality because what we're going to be able to do as you and I were speaking about uh, earlier today is you know guys like you and I we don't have anything to go back and, and learn about the impact of Bruce Dahl or Kernahan or, or maybe even the greats before him Nichols whereas with Simo he's a club legend um, generations after us are going to be able to go back and, um, and and understand exactly the impact that Kate Simpson had on them. No, of course. And even, even talking present day, just the fact that, you know, we're here in Victoria and we've had this whole situation where we haven't been able to go to games this year. So as much as we would have loved to be been there on Sunday to send off Matthew Cruz, one of our favourite sons, favourite favorite players of the last 10 years. And then for someone like Cade Simpson, for us to not be there on Saturday night in what will be his 342nd and final game of AFL football. And every single one of those has been at the Carlton Football Club. And it's something that, you know, we hold Simo in the highest of regard. And the fact that we can't be there to send him off so let's let's make our own moments guys let's use this platform use this night this is our chance to tell simo just how much we love him and how much he means to all of us and as much as we can't be there physically on saturday night and we hopefully will get a chance sometime next year this is our chance in the here and now to send off and tell Cade Simpson just how much we, as a Carlton faithful, absolutely adore him. Well said, mate. Why don't you get us started off? Talk to me about your favourite um, Cade Simpson moment. So many to choose from. I, I put it out in a tweet earlier today, mate. There, I'm 25 and a half, just gone September 1 this year. Um, I started the first time I saw football was the year 2000 and really understanding what it was. But the first time I really started following football and was around 2004. And for people my age, your age, really 26 years and under, we don't know what the Carlton Football Club looks like without Cade Simpson. He's just been there every so often. And the thing that really stands out for me is that num number one, how brave he is for the pe for the type of person that he is. You look at him as all skin and bones, like probably 70 kilos dripping wet, weighs absolutely nothing. And you just constantly seeing him crap backing back into packs, diving to get balls where no rifle man would want to go and get the ball. It's absolutely nuts and ridiculous some of the things that he does and it's just the little things the one percenters the smothers the tap ons the spoils the backing back into contests it's all the stuff that we 
absolutely love about him. And I think the the big thing for me, for Simo, it comes back to three words, and that is heart and soul. Simo is the heart and soul of this footy club and it has been like that for so many years and it's just yeah it's a sad day that the heart and soul is leaving the foot is hanging up the boots yeah uh, he's a magical player magical magical man did all the right things i don't think he ever got in trouble off field no suspensions nothing like that nah. he, all, all his own way very softly spoken and he even said today you know if i wanted to go out i wanted to go out this way covid not many people around and just sort of drift off into the sunset well i'm sorry simo tonight we're going to gloat about you a little bit and we're going to tell you how much we absolutely love you this this little guy in long sleeves he wears number six we all love him and we're gonna we're we're gonna tell a few stories tonight. We're gonna say what's your what's your favourite Simo memory, mate? When, uh, when like you said, Kate Simpson, what what does it remind you of? Um, it, it wasn't for me. It wasn't a particular moment that won us a game or whatever the case may be. That there's so many moments, but the first moment that sticks out to me uh, it was against Hawthorne. It was the the, the the spoil where he's 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 horizontal. And, you know, he at some point yeah. in his career might have been when he moved down back. So he obviously was a wingman and then he moved down back. And then he, he uh, maybe it was the beard. He added a layer of toughness and, and, and courageousness to himself. That's and, uh, yeah, that spoil. Yeah, you've got the Simo beard. That, that, that Simo spoil against the Hawks, uh, I believe it might have been in 2017, um, but that image is the one that sticks out to me. He had no right getting to that ball, and uh, that's the one for me. Nah, absolutely not. I think the big one for me, it's um, – so I was in a group today and someone said, you know, one of, one of the funniest moments was, you know, of Simo's career is when he got, you know, smacked by Sharon Wellingham. And as much as it's like, you know, a big, big hit – I remember like, yeah, okay, he's got a broken jaw, but he, like, from what I remember, he said he wanted to play the next week. And that's just yeah. Cade Simpson, you know, you'd, you'd have to be really, you know, hurt to miss a game. And you look at it, I was looking at it today, he played 18 seasons. Okay, his first couple of years, he played three games and then three games. But then from there, his durability is it's almost unmatched to anyone else in the league. You know, he didn't miss a game from round seven, 2005 to round 15, 2012, 158 games, one after another, after another, after another hit in the jaw. And then even recently long into his thirties, just churning out seasons of 20 plus games. I think 2018, when he did a, little hamstring and was the first time he'd missed more than three games in a year. So since the early, early days of his career. So just phenomenal durability. And I think the highest respect you can get from players around the league and different commentators and media analysts is that when someone says, He's the type of person that I just love to run out with and play with because you know you're going to get 100% and that's what you're going to get from Simo. Every single time yeah. he stepped over that white line, you knew you were going to get 100% and and more. He just loved his football club, loyal, loyal right until the end. And it's amazing to see the player that he... Has become remembering he got no disposals after three games. It's quite, it's quite amazing that you know coming in when he did, and remember when he came to the club, Terry. It was a bit of a, it's a bit of a war zone. It was. Well, mate, your your words have been summarised perfectly. I don't know how anyone is going to be able to summarise his career as good as as good as what you did, but they're going to give him a crack. So, uh, nice. thank you very much. And, um, mate, I look forward to, to seeing what this night becomes. 
Nah, no worries, mate. Um, it should go well. And it's a night for, just before I go, it's a night for everyone to sort of come on and relay your thoughts and, as I said, a chance to tell Simpson about how you really feel. But as we go along, I want everyone at home to really have a think. I want to pose a couple of questions, if I can, to the audience, Terry. Think yeah, about Think about who's what's leaving our club now in terms of Kate Simpson. So not in terms of, okay, you know, that small lockdown defender who can run out of the back line. But think of it in terms of, you know, okay, our heart and soul is hanging up the boots. So think about who is going to take on that mantle of the heart and soul of the Carlton Football Club as because it's the end of an era. No, Cruz are retiring, Eddie Betts near the end, Simpson retiring, Mark Murphy near the end. It's the end of an era. The end of an era is coming very, very thick and fast. And it's time for some of these new guys who we've bought in over recent years to step up and be the new heart and soul of the football club. So question for everyone, who's that going to be for you? Who do you want that to be? as we send off Cade Simpson as the most revered figure in the history of our club in the last 20 years. I don't think that's a big call to say that's exactly who or what he is. He'll hate it, but that's exactly what it is. We need, we're now looking for heart and soul and we're going to celebrate our heart and soul by anointing the new one and honouring the legend that he has. Been good on you, mate. I'll see you in the comments. See you in the comments. See you, mate. All right, guys. Before I continue with this one second, Pom, the link is now. I'm putting it into the YouTube comments and also the Facebook comments. You guys know how the phone cams work. Uh, be patient in the waiting room, and uh, you will get your turn. I'll try and get through as many of you as humanly possible. Pommy and Oz, mate, talk to me about Kate Simpson. Let me tell you a little story. Baby, well, baby Pom, let's say mid-20s Pom. In another lifetime, there was, I, I was this close to joining Geelong, this close. My boss at the time was trying to get me into footy and it was Geelong, 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 Geelong. So, cut a long story short, 2015, round eight. I'm there, centre wing and... Out of nowhere, 30 seconds into the game, little kid Simpson looking a little bit like a cross between Tarzan and a homeless person, climbs up the back of Tom Hawkins and takes an absolute screaming mark. Crowd erupts. That's the kid Simpson I remember. Outgunned, outsized, outmanned, but never outhearted. If that's a word... It bloody well is now because I'm a pom. I own this language. I can make words up. Tell you what, no one will ever out-heart that guy, Simpson. You know what? Sometimes up against people that were probably a lot more skilled than him, a lot more talented than him, in his later years a lot quicker than him. But one thing you could never question about that bloke was his will and his intent his loyalty, and if there's ever anything that summarises this club, it's no task is too big, no task is too hard. We, we will try and we will win through heart, and that guy sums up what it is to be this great club. Froth the bloke, froth the man. Everything he stands for, I'm right behind him, and it's going to be an emotional day. But I'll say this to the players. I'll say this to players. And I'm going to look you in the eye when I say it. You fucking let that man down on, on round 18 against Brisbane. You dare present the shit you presented against Adelaide. I'll come for every one of you 17 soft sacks of shit. Yet they owe him blood, broken legs, running to the death. I want to see players spewing at the end of the game for that guy, running hard till the end. I want them all to be carried off because they're exhausted. That's what he deserves, the farewell he deserves. Good on you, mate. Well said. Get him a win. Win for Simo. 
All right. Black Carrot, $6 for number six. Well done. Joseph Adamo, mate. Talk to me about Kate Simpson. Mate, oh, mate, I said to you yesterday, I'm, I'm, I've been, it's, it's been emotional, mate, and it's not even Saturday yet. Like, it's crazy. Um, for me, like, I'm 26. Um, you know, Simo's, Simo's the first player, if you're sort of around this age bracket, that you would have seen from the start to now the finish of his career where he's been just a constant. Like, all right, we had Cruiser, and Cruiser's in kind of in the same bucket, but Simo played with Teague, for God's sake. Like, <laughs> that's how old this bloke is. That's how, that's how long this guy's been around. That's how long he's been a part of our lives. Um, like, you just can't imagine a back line for Carlton without Kate Simpson for more than a game. And it's going to be... It's going to be emotional on Saturday, um, I think. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll also go along with the sentiments of Dan there that if uh, if there's any less effort than what Simo would have given at any point in his career from those 22 blokes on Saturday, I'll be absolutely livid with this team. Um, if anyone deserves a send-off of grand proportions, um, where it's fighting tooth and nail to the very, very end, pressure through the roof from start to finish. Um, it's 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 Cade Simpson. Like there's no one else. Um, you know, it's it, you, you can't. You're right. You can't put into words. You, you, there's no amount of words you can that you can say for this bloke for what he's done for this club. Like he came, he came at a time where the club was in turmoil. Literally 2002. Salary cap hits, breaches hit, sanctions hit, and where it's like we're never going to come out of this. What hope do we have? And um, you know, our first pick in that draft was pick forty-five. Who would have thought that that pick forty-five in a in a draft where the football club's on their knees screaming for for something uh, that they'd get this warrior um, for three hundred and forty-two games and for and for eighteen seasons? And mate, it, it is it, it's. Makes the, it makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up to think about it. Like the, the amount of hope that Simo himself as an individual gave this club and their supporters for so many years through the darkest of times, didn't leave, stuck through the losses. We know about the record. I'm not even going to go there. Um, you know, it's it's incredible. Like I, I, don't, I don't think we'll see a player like Simo again. Very well said, mate. Thank you so think, much for uh, sharing. No, that's okay. I, I just want to, before I go, um, firstly, you stole my thunder. My favourite moment is the Hawthorne moment as well, mate. So thank you very much. <laughs> I think that encompasses, right, everything. Right, it encompasses everything that Simo did. Like it just, the long sleeves, you know, the the the, the sweat, the, the long hair, and just the desperation to get to that ball in a very tight contest. Um, I'd be expecting to see that this week from 22 players. I'll tell you what, mate, I will be filthy if I don't see that. Um, but I just want to go through these guys. There's going to be um, on the as part of the Blue Broad website um, after this. We're, we're gonna we're gonna link this video in with with an article for Simo. We did one for Cruiser the other day, but this is um, this is obviously extra extra special. Um, we're gonna link in the fan cam video into this article for you all to rewatch if you want. But um, as part of this article, I've I've just I've come up with some stats, and it was thanks to uh, a, a group of my mates, uh, Reese and Jules, um, if you're watching, that pointed me in the direction of, of where I could find uh, these stats because I was, I was struggling on AFL tables to find the, the Carlton uh, record stats. And if, if you don't need numbers to appreciate this bloke, you really don't. But when you look at the numbers on top of that, Simo is a fucking freak. He, it is, his career is freakish. So we all know he's third for all-time games played at Carlton. He's second for disposals behind Craig Bradley at the Blues. He averaged 21 disposals a game. Second for kicks all-time. First for marks by a long way, by a long wow. way. And we've had guys like Stephen Kernahan that played 200-plus games for the club that were marking, just marking machines up forward. He beat Kernahan by 250 marks. Um, he's fourth for tackles, which says so much about his intensity at the contest, considering he was a halfback, where the accountability at halfback in that position generally doesn't come under too much scrutiny at times. Um, first for rebound 50s, he doubled whoever's in second. Like, that—that that is just outrageous. Second for inside 50s, 
second for contested possessions all time, first for uncontested possessions, fourth for one percenters, first for bounces. He beat Chris Yaron by 300, obviously, because of the, the amount of games played. That helps. And he's third for goal assists behind, behind Eddie Betts, and I think Murphy is up there too. If that doesn't say enough about the player that Simo was and everything that he put on the line for this football club over 18 seasons, I don't know what is. And I've said it twice now, and I'll say it for one last time. If there's any player, and it's a long shot, but if there is any player watching this video right now that popped up on their Facebook stream for some, some reason, if you go out there on Saturday against Brisbane, and you put in that putrid fucking effort we saw against Adelaide, I swear to God there will be no way to forgive this playing group for months and months and months to come because this guy deserves 110% effort from the get-go to the final siren. Get him a fucking win, please. Please. Well said, mate. Good on you. Thank you, mate. Take care. See ya. This is interesting, guys, because we get to uh, we get to look back on this in generations to come and, and see what he meant to everyone. And, and look who I've got here. We've got the uh, the, the power couple of the cheer squad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, he's come prepared. Nothing can... top. <laughs> the floor is yours. Go for it. What about what is it about Kate Simpson? No, you go. Well, firstly, I want to uh, agree with Joe. Um, anybody that rates themselves at the Carlton Football Club, anyone who thinks that they're worth anything, now's your time to show it. It's going to be a very, very long summer and a very uh, frustrated fan base if they put anything less than 110% out there because Simo's done it for 18 years and all we're asking for the rest of these bastards is do it for one week. That's all we want, one week. They can almost redeem the last month of utter bullshit with one week. One performance is all we're after. Like we can all we can we won't forget the last month, but we'll forgive it for a bit. Um Simo means the world to us. Like we're in mourning. It's cruiser is the heart and soul as well. Um, you've got to be to get, you know, fifty thousand people changing your name every time you go near it. But Simo represents to me, um, I said to my dad earlier, I called him and he's a staunch Carlton man, and he said, oh, well, they've got to go at some point. And in a way, it's the last of the shit era leaving the club. And I said, yeah, but, Dad, he was the one. He and Cruiser were the two blokes who gave their ass every week during those shit weeks. And if I'm completely honest, going back to Jono's question before of who's going to be the new heart and soul, if I'm completely transparent, I don't trust anyone else to do it. Even the last month, even on the weekend, Simo was still busting his ass. Um, I don't know if I can trust everyone going forward to give anything close to what Kate Simpson's given this. And I really hope that people prove me wrong. I I want them to do it. Um, to answer Jono's question, who do I think it might be? I feel that Williamson's got a bit of it about him and, and Weedering's the other one. Weedering, I feel he's already been beaten up a few times, but stands up and stuff and not one to complain. Um, I think they've got it in them, but um, yeah, it's a big, big hole where we have departing our club. What about you? What do you think of him? Uh, I love Simo. And um, the one moment no Carlton fan likes talking about is that unforgivable moment against Collingwood mm. uh, a few years ago. Oh, and man. There's probably never been a more hated opposition player than since Darren Milburn, mm. but that just shows how much everybody absolutely loves Cade Simpson. Mm. And the moment he went down, there was about 60,000 Carlton fans ready to jump the field. Mm. and We're just going to miss him. He's the heart and soul of our club. In terms of what specific would, moments, sorry, you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. What, what is, uh, what is your? There's so many moments, but any, Thanks. any of them that come to your mind? Uh, don't think anyone's mentioned yet is the goal late in the game in the day, day we drew with Essendon. He ran from centre half back to centre half forward, took five bounces from memory, and there's a little, there's a moment within that moment. Um, 
he pretends to kick on his right foot when he gets to 50 and and managed to fake the bloke on the like the bloke putting his hands in the air 342 games and even on the weekend people were still going to smother on his right foot the fact that he still fools people and they still pretend that he's got a right foot is just utter nonsense um but there's something to be said about the man if he's that agile and that quick of foot that he still manages to fool people after 18 years of doing it um that's a really special one um personally though um he's 300 so that's what we've got these shirts the cheer squad made these simo shirts for that um dale baker the artist shout out to dale um hooked us up with the design and we sold our own shirts just to one of the great men um that week was pretty special but before that in his 250th we played port adelaide at, at docklands and it was also michael jamison's 150th and for those who remember or who was pardon me those who were there that day uh we were down by about four and a half goals at three quarter time with about nine minutes to go we're still three and a half goals down and of all players it was liam sumner who uh, jumped on i uh, believe it might have been darcy Byrne jones but don't hold me to that but jumped on the port adelaide defender and got a hold in the ball tackle kicked the goal and got us back in it and gave us a bit of hope and that's the day that cruiser become a hero when we you know we kicked the winning goal um that day really early in the game um mark murphy went down injured uh, levi casbolt hurt himself and played on injured um and cripps busted his knee and was you know hurt played on injured so basically we had one and a bit on the bench from the first quarter and it is now since been said that at quarter time uh, brendan bolton went out in the field and said to the team playing group well you know to the midfield group especially the likes of crips the likes of bryce gibbs um we need you guys to be spewing after the game you need to run yourself in the ground and sure enough gibbs has 33 crips has 32 or whatever it was touches and they just ran their asses off and after the game they interview bryce gibbs Oh, they interview Simo, sorry, I take that back. And in the background, you can see Bryce Gibbs in the centre circle chundering his guts out and this red Gatorade is going all over the place. And he literally vomited and worked his ass off for Simo. And after the game, one of the great benefits and one of the great privileges we have as cheer squad members is that after packing up the banner and stuff, some weeks were afforded the, the privilege of going in the rooms. Um, we went in the rooms that day and the atmosphere was something I'll never forget. Um, and there was a group of players, unlike on the weekend, uh, genuinely earned to get caught up in the moment. Um, and there was a few tears, a lot of tears, but that night it stuck with me ever since. And Brendan Bolton's words that night when addressing the playing group and thanking them for the, for the performance, he said, they gave a presentation to Simo and Bolt said, um, you guys played like Simo for Simo. And it stuck with me ever since and to me that's what that bloke means um there were all the past players were there brad fisher turned up um you know simon wiggins was in the rooms there was all these guys who got drafted with him and were around in those days um in the rooms crying their eyes out because they were that wrapped for their mate and that's four years ago now and he's got four more years worth of love and adoration and respect from the playing group um they've really got to turn it in this week if they if they turn out like they did against adelaide i mean even you, know, you and i all of us those of us that do online social media stuff with the most positive glasses half full rose colored glasses as anyone on the planet but even us <laughs> <we'll>, <laughs> hell hath no fury terry hell hath no fury if they don't do it for that man Absolutely. Well said, guys. Thank you so much for joining and, and sharing your Kate Simpson story. Baggers. Love it. All right. Who's next? Mr. Kayafa. Tess, mate. What's happening? Not much, mate. Talk to me about your favourite Kate Simpson moment. Well, firstly, I just want to start off, man. For me and you especially, because we're around the same age, this is basically a generational player gone. And you know we, you know we thought, you know it's 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 hard to believe that it's just come to that point. We thought that this guy was just going to play on forever till the day he died. He was going to play and represent Carlton Football Club. But 
you know, it, it's it's come to that point. And, and, you know, it actually did hit me today. Uh, the Cruiser one hit me, but the Simpson one hit me even harder because that bloke is the epitome of Carlton. He is the epitome of loyalty. He's the, he's the epitome of passionate. And he wore his heart on his sleeve every single time he put that Carlton jumper on. And, you know, I think it was, is it, was it Joe? Is it Adamo? What's, what was his name again? Sorry. Joe, Joe Adamo. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I forgot his name for a sec. Joe said it perfectly, you know, about all the stats and, and all that sort of stuff. But the thing that, um, you know, I remember him most for is the things that don't show up on the stat sheet. Those little things that win football games and win, you know, big things are the ones that don't show up on the stat sheet. And that epitomizes uh, Cade Simpson to an absolute T. One, my, my favorite memory of Simpson, um, you know, we all remember him for his, you know, his bravery, his heart and soul, his defending, you know, that crazy, you know, spoil that you spoke about against um, against Hawthorne. But the one that strikes for me is that game, the one that we remembered for with Cruiser when he kicked three goals against Port Adelaide in in um, when we come back from the dead. Um, a lot of people forget that in that game, it was actually Kate Simpson who kicked the winner. Kate Simpson kicked the goal that put us in front that game. And I will just never forget that moment because he kicked that goal and you could just see the pure elation in him, just the smile. He walked up to the crowd with the two hands like this and was running like a madman up to the wing. And um, I just think that summarised Simpson to a T for me. Every single thing that he did meant so much to him and you could see how much that goal, kicking a winner, helping his team get over the top, in a game where it all looked dead. Um, it's just something I'll never forget that moment. And um, it, it's going to be, it, it's it's hard to believe a Carlton without Kate Simpson. If if that playing group, you know, I'm just going to reiterate exactly what, you know, basically everyone before me has said. If this group brings out that shit that they did against Adelaide for this week for a Carlton legend like Kate Simpson, I will spew. I will absolutely spew. Um, they need to wake up, give it their all, do exactly as Kate has done for 18 years for one week. That's all mm. we've asked, it's one week, heart and soul, give it everything, blood, sweat and tears, get the job done, boys. Well said, mate. Thank you so much. All right, Stairs, go Blues. Go Blues, mate. Hey, mate. <laughs> How are you? Oh, you got the badges ready to go, mate. Look at you. Fatigue train, Simo 300s. I'm here. Um, I've actually written something. It won't take long, but I'm better at speaking off the words that I've written. But I just wanted to say thanks for putting this on, first of all. This will be great to look back on. And um, this is probably this is the first thing Carlton player that retiring has actually elicited an emotional reaction from me ever. I was at Chris Judd when he did his knee. I was at that game. That was sad, but this is this is something else. So I, I just want to read my little piece, and um, if it. you want to ask any questions, feel free. Um, all right. Cade Simpson. He instilled in me a love of sleeves, a love of footy, and probably most importantly, a love of Carlton. Um, he might be remembered as a great left foot kick who plays from the back pocket. Uh, but he was so much more than just that. He could kick goals. People forget. Gee whiz, he could kick goals. And we've already talked about some of the great ones tonight. Um, and he could rack up possessions like the best of them. I mean, he had 40 in a game against St Kilda once. That's insane. He had 40 touches. It was the other stuff that made him great, Tez. It was the other stuff. Um, it was the other stuff that made him the heart of the Navy Blues that I love so much. He made plays that no one else would even attempt to make. He had no regard for his own safety. The only thing that mattered to him was winning the contest, going back with the flight of the ball, making the goal-saving play, making the right decision. That was the big one. He always made the right decision. He was skinny, but people forget he had a lot of fight on him. He wore his slard on his. He, he wore his heart on his long sleeves. He was, when someone needed a roughing up, he wasn't afraid to go in. 
um, my first year of membership was actually 2003. It wasn't a great time for my family, but footy and Carlton gave me a time to really bond with my dad. And, you know, it's still something that's we're both passionate about and spend every weekend talking about and watching together. Um, but importantly, in 2003, I fell in love with that skinny little kid. I wouldn't have known as an 11-year-old that he only had zero possessions in his first three games, and I wouldn't have cared. I loved him. He was skinny. He was from my area. He was great. Um, and I, I went throughout his career, I I've, I've went to all his milestone moments, any, all the ones that happened in Victoria, uh, because he deserved it. I owed it to him. Um, and I hope that I, I paid him back in some way with my, my cheering and my screaming and my making an idiot of myself because his passion was my passion. My passion was his passion. I fed off him. Um, and unfortunately, so often as a club, we let him down. Uh, we did, but he never let us down. Um, he never complained. He never sucked. He demanded the best. He led by example. He put the boys on his back when he could, and he just said, do it like I do it, boys. And we couldn't always do it, but when we did, it was special. Uh, Simo, if you're watching this, if you ever see this, I love you, mate. You've you've done the Carlton Football Club proud. Thank you. Um, so that's that's just sort of my feelings there, Tez. I'm, I'm saving myself about eight grand by not being able to go to his last game because I won't run onto the I won't run onto the ground and get fined. But uh, yeah, I'm struggling a bit today. It's it's an emotional day. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be. We, we, it's gonna be a tough game to watch. It's gonna be a tough final siren to hear on uh, on Saturday. I think uh, when it's all said and done. So it's good we can come together uh, in the moment and and share our emotions and share our our uh, happy stories. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Thanks for giving us the opportunity. No worries, mate. Have a great one. Speak to you soon. Speak to you soon. That was amazing. Hey, Tess. Oscar, mate, talk to me about Cage Simpson. What's your favourite uh, Cage Simpson moment? Cage Simpson moment, that's a hard one. But aside from the moment, he was, for a lot of your viewers as well, he was a hero. Him, Cruiser, Mark Murphy, all the 2000 people born in 2000 to maybe 2004, stuff like that. He's a player, I'm 16 years old. He's played for longer than I've been alive. He's a guy that I used to have the, my back, number of the back of the jersey. You see the kids with bets for Vola Murphy and even like Crips, like that's the person you want to be like, Kate Simpson. Humble, mm. never toot his own horn. He's, in, he's inspirational. Like you want to be, if you want to be someone like from the Carlton Football Club, you don't want to be a Favola, obviously. He's had his issues. You don't want to be a Mitch Robinson. He's had some issues in the past. Nothing against him. They're great footballers. You want to be Cade Simpson, someone that always puts their heart into everything they do, someone that puts their body on the line for the club. So he's been through there some good times and some terrible times. He's been there through everything. I think he's had over five coaches at the club that he's have gone through him. He's been on teams where he's the only one left, him, Cruiser, Murphy, Ed Kerno, Eddie Betts. They're the four left, but, like, you tell me that 2008 lineup, there's no one else there. No, it's, it's a good point, mate. Do you have one particular moment that sticks in your memory? One particular oh. play, goal, mark, spoil, tackle? I've got to say, when he broke his jaw, when he got hit, he was almost straight up. He wanted to keep on going when he went to the bench. He he put in his heart and soul, or even the, even the Hawthorne moment when he came flying across the pack to spoil it with two fists when no other footballer in our club, I think, would ever do that. And it was nice to see Doherty do that the other day when he tackled Blakey, I think it was, in the dying moments of the game. But it was a very Kate Simpson-like tackle, wasn't it? Yeah, pretty Kate Simpson-like. And even you get signs of Willow now even going, just taking on the game, being confident. And that's what Kate Simpson was. He knew what he was doing. He was calm. And I know a lot of been, people have been comparing him to players, but he's not comparable. No one's going to be the next Cade Simpson. And yeah. I think players like Walshy, Weedering, even even Fisher, they want to be the next Sam Walsh, the next Zach Fisher, the next Jacob Weedering, and they want to model it off Cade Simpson, if you know what I'm trying to say. Yep. 
Well said, mate. Very well said. Uh, enjoy this week. Enjoy the build-up, and uh, we'll chat to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. No worries, mate. Oh, Rocco. Go, brother. All right. Let's go. No, no, go for it. What were you going to say? I was going to say, talk to me about Simo, mate. Today and Sat it's Saturday we play, do we? It's not about the Carlton Football Club. This is about a man who wore a jumper. This is what this is about. Forget about the Blues winning. Of course, we want them to win. I hope they do. But this is about a man. For me, what I remember about Simo is this. 2002 is that line where we went from the Carlton Football Club of old. That was the year that they stripped all the draft picks from us. Our whole soul and history of this of this team changed that year. That year, that year we were supposed to get Goddard and Wells, number one and two, and they stripped everything from us. And from that point onwards, it's kind of changed the Blues. And there's Simo. He's the 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 one person that stands between the two eras, let's say, yeah? This is the man, you know, and he's still there. That year there, players like uh, Goddard Wells, there was McVeigh, there was Mackey, there was Joe Watson, there was Malcheski. We even picked up Fisher, who played 99 games for Cup, yeah? And I still believe even with Goddard and Wells, we got the best pick that day, man, with 40, uh, pick 45, man. We got the best pick, man. Because, and we're all going to say, we all know the stats. You know, the first three games is zero. The next three games, I think he got something like 12 or 15 possessions in three games. Man, imagine the fan cam was around those days. We would have gone to town on this bloke, mate. We would have given it to him. And what I do remember talking to one of my mates, He's going, what do you reckon about this skinny bloke, man? I'm going, come on, mate. This bloke won't play 50 games, man. Like, seriously, you know? He proved me wrong. And this is what the team has to do, man. They have to prove us wrong, you know? But this is about Simpson, you know? Um, he also won the Jim Steins medal, if you remember, when we played the Australian rules. You know, that's another thing, man. He goes to, like, a different sport and he wins the Jim Steins medal, man. Um he breaks his jaw after 158 games, man. Th that's what I remember. I remember this, this, this games going, you know, one at a time, and he gets out 158. And when he broke his jaw, I'm telling you, we were devastated because the bloke just kept showing up, kept showing up, and it had to be some dirty pie that had to break his jaw, you know. That really pissed me, pissed me off. And then he, he won the best and fairest, you know. Now, some are going to remember him for, some losers are going to remember him for, oh, he had the most losses in the AFL, yeah? And some are going to remember him for the 342 games. But that's not what he's remembered for. He's the heart and soul and never give up attitude. There's Farlap and fucking Simpson is riding Farlap. That's what this is about, man. Simpson is riding Farlap. Man, if there's a way to take his heart, and stick it in that premiership cabinet, man, and say to everyone that comes through, this is the heart you need. And if you haven't got this heart, forget it. You're not playing for it because that's what Simpson is to us, you know. Um, he become great not because he was the best skills. He wasn't the biggest. He wasn't the fastest. He become great because of his work ethic, man. He become great because every time he went... I worked with an ex-footballer who played with him, and he said he would do those one percenters 100% out on the track, and it showed up on the ground. That's what we remember Simpson for, you know? Yes, people have always asked the question of, uh, would you rather play 18 games and win a premiership or play 340 games and, and not win one? You know what? I'd play the free throw 40 and not win one, man, because it, at the end of the day, it was a great career, that bloke, man. He gave his heart and soul. And I hope this week, I really hope that I don't know if they're going to win, but they're going to show the Simo heart and soul because after that, 
uh, the other bloke there, sorry, I forgot his name, asked who's going to be our heart and soul, yeah? And he, and he's right. It's hard, man, to see who's going to step up, yeah? I believe, to me, Charlie and Sauce, I don't know how great they're going to be, but they show that they've got that heart and soul. So maybe them two, I really do hope them two are going to be the ones, you know. And um, and that's about it, really. I don't know. What, what do I remember about him? Man, there's so many, like, marks and smothers and kicks and goals. Man, they all just blur into one with that bloke, you know what I mean? The thing is about him, he's penciled in every week. So when you do the, the sheet, you go, Simo, and then you put the rest in. You know what I mean? Did you, has there ever, I don't know. Has there ever been a time you can remember that you say, we've got to drop him? I, I, don't, really. I, really, I can't really remember because you knew he would give 100% every time he was out there, you know? Yeah. Um, listen, man, when you play footy in, spot, in life and everything, man, you live your life and you hope to become a memory, right? Mm. What is he going to be remembered for? Well, he's going to be remembered as a hero. Mm. I ask the rest of the team, what are you going to be remembered for, a hero or will you be forgotten? He's definitely going to be remembered as a great. Man, I love the bloke, man. I, I really do. Um, that's about it, man. That's about it. Well, about the no, no. well said, mate. Thank you very much for contributing. It was very well summarised. No worries. And uh, come on, go Blues. That's it, mate. Love, Rocco. Tez, <clears throat> how's it going? Good, mate. Talk to me. Talk to me about Simo and your favourite moment. Oh, favourite moment? Um, one that sticks out is probably the goal against Essendon, 2011, yep. off the half back. Um, that game had like a the finals type feel to it. I think the game before we played Collingwood. And we got done, but then went into that one, and it was. I'm pretty sure that um, we're both equal with us, and then going into the game, but like no one could um, like separate us of who was going to win. And yeah, I remember listening to that on the radio with Triple M commentary. And, uh, yeah, but um, I always enjoyed Simo on the wing, and then and when he went back, like later on. I think everyone like, um, grew more respect for him, like going back with the flight, spoiling, putting his body on the line. Um, yeah, that, that Wellingham one sticks in my mind a lot. Uh, I was overseas and I remember my brother telling me, he goes, oh, Simpson's just been knocked out cold. And I remember watching the replay. I'm like, mate, if there's anyone that's going to put his body on the line in that position, it's, it's him. Mm. And I remember he, so he was out the week after and it broke his... Um, consecutive game streak as well. He played about, what was it, 150-odd in a row? And that brought it, to, brought it to the end. And then he came back even stronger. So, yeah, uh, it's been a good ride. Good luck fighting back tears on Saturday, mate. <laughs> yeah, uh, it'll be hard, I reckon. Yeah. I'll be a lot, yeah. of, a lot of us in that position. Yeah, for sure, mate. Uh, thanks very much for sharing. No worries. Cheers. See you, mate. Very well said. Very well said. Bradley. How's it going? Good, mate. What's your favourite Kate Simpson moment? Um, probably the Essendon game where he kicks three, puts us in front. Got to be. Has to be that. Um, but among those uh, recent memories, probably against Doggies, where we are by, we're, like, we're going to win the game. And the most Cade Simpson thing to do is he dives and we're up by 90-54 and he dives onto the ball and he saves it. And that's just a Cade Simpson thing to do, you know. Yeah, And I just absolutely. think um, that, um, what else is there? there? You can't describe him. There's no one that can, you know, you can't replace him, you know, like, there's no one ever in the game to with that intent for the game, the love for the game, and you get every hundred ten percent every single week. And we, if you any other player, need, every, the whole team needs to be like him. And he, like Teague said recently, just like today, I think he said everyone. Uh, everyone said 
everyone look up to him, play like him, and I think some, something along those lines. And I think that's what we need to do. And yeah. Well said, mate. Thanks very much. Not a problem. See you, mate. Hey, Terry, how are you, mate? Good, mate. What's happening? Talk to me about Simo. Look, I'm hurting, man. I mean, despite that that thing that happened on Sunday afternoon, we're not going to touch on it. It's really tough seeing Simo, Cruz and Gibbsy go. I mean, I'm 15 and Kate Simpson's, he's never been an outright superstar, but I don't know an AFO world without him. And I don't know, bro. It's just, it's hard to comprehend his side without him in it. Uh, I feel like my childhood's kind of disappearing before my eyes, you know. Um, once Murph and uh, Betsy are gone, that's kind of it. Anyway, um, favourite memory, that 2018 Frio game at Etihad. So we're down 7 to 77 at half time or something, you know. Putrid game, one of our most embarrassing, and that says something. But I just remember him having 21 at half time or something. And in typical in typical Cade Simpson fashion, he just, he just willed his way throughout the game. And it was probably... He's probably the only one that would have got a pass mark for that game. Like, I remember being so sad at the end of the game, but thinking to myself, like, you know, Simo can Simo can really hold his head up high. Yeah, he found a way, no matter how badly we were playing, to always get himself a pass mark, didn't he? Yeah, and in response to Jono's question, I think the obvious question is Sam Walsh. The kid's an outright superstar. If anyone's going to fill the shoes of Simo, be our heart and soul with the effort and the sheer will, it's certainly Walshy. Yep. Very good just, point, mate. Just, just one more thing. I just want to propose, propose a question to all the baggers. Would you have much rather the news come from the club or Simo first? Like with Cruz too, like personally, I honestly didn't like hearing it from like fucking Tom Brown. Like, I don't know. I would have much rather hearing the news like without the rumours come from the club. I don't know if that's just me, but that's how I felt. Yeah. Anyways, Fair enough. It- yeah. Go Blues. Lots of love for Simo, true warrior, and the boys. They better fucking win for him this weekend. Like, they owe him. As Pom said, if that fucking list of 22 do not get up and give a good effort for the man, that they won't be forgiven by many of us, and for me, for that matter, at least. And if there's a player watching, and there damn well could be, they oh, my fuck, they, they better put a solid effort in for the man. He, he deserves it. Yeah. Very well said, mate. Good on you. We'll speak to you soon. Thank you. See ya. Hey, Tez. Long time follower yeah. of your show. First time jumping on cam- fan cam. Great to have you here now, Bill, mate. Talk to me about Simo. Um, I'm 24, so he, I, first time I started following the football club was sort of when Simo came in. So for me, like many other, many, many, some other people have said, it's the end of an era for me. I'm watching him and watching Cruiser go. Um, he's a heart and soul. I think everyone says that, but I genuinely think he is. Um, I think players that will step in uh, will be Jesus. If he can, if he's good enough to have the talent, I think he's got. He plays with heart. Charlie's another one. I think Cottrell as well. Um, they're the three players that, well, I think especially Jesus and Cottrell, they're not the most talented, but they put their they play with their guts week in week out. As for my favourite memory, I'd go back last year, if more recently, against Frio when we Murphy Murphy snapped and we won the game. He kicked the clutch clutch goal from the boundary. Um, I think before or after Silvani. So I think that was that was probably defies him. My heart and soul, big moment leader, stood up when it counts. Um, and the other thing is, I don't know. I feel like he's very underrated. It's not. We don't. He's, it, like when you talk about three hundred game players, people talk about Adam Goods, Robert Harvey, but I think Simo is very, very underrated. Totally um, agree, mate. Yeah, I think doesn't maybe doesn't get enough credit in the AFL or AFL circles as you would for other players. I mean, he hasn't won a Brownlow, but he hasn't been in the most successful teams either. He's been a good player in a poor team for a long time. So I do think he's he yeah, doesn't get the credit he he deserves. Yeah. Very, very well said, mate. Thanks very much for sharing. No worries. Thanks for having me. Speak to you soon. See you, mate. G'day, mate. G'day, Mr. Starai. Hard day. Yeah. Uh, hard, hard day. Um, I <clears throat> Simpson, Kate Simpson started uh, first place his first game when I was six. 
So I think I mirror a few in here where it's the end of an era. But in my lifetime, I can't remember a bloke giving as much to Carl in terms of their heart and soul as Cade Simpson did. He wasn't the most talented. He, he wasn't the fastest, although he had speed. But he just did everything for the club. And he put his body on the line for the club. For 341 games, and he'll do it for 342. It's um, We're going to miss him. I'm going to miss him. Um, and I think I'm, I'm incredibly grateful I get to see his last game on Saturday Night Live. And I'm so wow, yeah. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a moment, but I I don't even you know I'm glad he's gone out playing well. For me, I, I don't know about everyone else here, and you know I, there's people who are saying you know one more year and it's valid, but I'm glad he's gone out playing well, and we remember him for that, and not for you know a massive decline, and and we just thank him. He's, he's given us everything. He's given the club everything he possibly can. You cannot ask anyone, anybody else more than that, really. Imagine every single player on the list gave the same amount of effort that he did. We'd probably have a premiership by now. Mate, if they gave a quarter of the effort at times. like, And that's not discounting anyone, but he would go above and beyond um, for this football club. I think for me, what I really remember, it's an innocuous moment. 2013 semi-final, lost to Sydney. Last five minutes of the game, they can't remember who kicked it towards, basically it was going to be a goal. And he has ran basically 50 metres to mark that ball on the line. The game's over. We're going to, we're going to lose our season. It's done. And it just typifies the, the courage of it. And I was sitting right in front of it watching him. It's just, he, he just, he gave it everything. He gave it everything. And it's a massive credit to him and... We need to celebrate. I, you know, we're talking about who's going to be the next heart and soul of the club. I, I don't know. We've got suspicions on it, but I think probably we just need to thank him for everything he's done for Carlton and everything he's given to us as a fan base. And the, you know, he hasn't had a premiership, doesn't discredit his career, and what he's given you, what he's given me in moments, whether it's been kicking the winning goal against Port in 2008, he's two two fiftieth against Port in 2016. The goal against Essendon in 2011, um, the spoil against Hawthorne in 2013, getting 37 possessions in his 300th game. I mean, are you serious? 37 touches in game 300. How many have done that? I can't think of many. He's he's been a warrior and a champion of this football club, and I love him for it, and I thank him for it for giving me, in what's been a really you know it's been tough growing up as Carlton supporters through this generation. You would know that. But he's given me a hell of a lot of joy watching him play and just how much he cared for this football club. So thank you, Kate. Well said, brother. Speak to you soon. Speak soon. See you, mate. How are you, Kate? Mate, I'm good. I want to hear all about Kate Simpson and what you remember in terms of his uh, one of his better moments in his career. There's been many. Oh, there's been many. It's been, you know, we thought Sunday was quite a tough day. And then two days later, well, we had the speculation yesterday. And to hear it officially, we all thought it was coming probably throughout the year. Um, We all hoped it was never going to happen. As that um, previous bloke just said, at, at least he's going out on such a high, you know. on On Sunday, he was... The, the quick dash from defence, having a bounce, taking the game on, inside kicks. It's just, it's, it's, it's hard. It, um, it sucks because we've never, we've never had such a, such a player like him, you know. And for him to, to step in, you know, he didn't get a touch in his first couple of games. <laughs> and it's just him to knuckle down and, and play with such heart. I'm, there's not one player that has been like him since I've been alive. Like, I haven't seen anyone like him where he just plays like it's his last. You know, every every set play, it's just... And when, when the ball's in deep, when you got Cade in your team, right, like, you just, you just don't even think of anyone else because when he has the ball in his hands, you think, oh, don't worry, Simo's got it. 
Simo's got it. Thank, oh, thank fuck Simo has the ball. You know, he's going to watch him use this. And then something always happens. Like even in, in big games where Judd's 250th diving for the spoil and Hawthorne, there's, to me there's, there, there's not one moment where I, I put it down to. It's like, you know, plugger, Tony Lockett, where there's only one Tony Lockett. There's only one fucking Cade Simpson. Like, he's you, – you just – you know, we can start a song, you know, there's only one Cade Simpson. But that, that Sherrod Wellingham, like, mm, that still just makes my blood boil. But it shows with the reaction how we came back. And we won that game and, and we'll injury riddled. But that's how much it showed. And when Bryce Gibbs is chucking his guts up after that win against Geelong, it's like if if there's anything to take out of Cade Simpson, I just really hope that his legacy, you know, it adopts down to the playing group, and it just lives within there. You know, you, like you just you, the speculation about who's going to be the heart and soul, who's going to be the heart and soul. Just it, it's not thinking; it's just. It's Cade Simpson's. He's his heart and soul lives in Carlton forever. Like we haven't had a player anywhere near as much of like courageous or or just brave and not a big not a big speaker. We know that, but when he speaks, everyone listens. Everyone, and I'm I'm glad that we never made him captain because he was that on field leader that we all just loved. And he will be sorely, sorely missed and irreplaceable. Well said, mate. Very, very well said. Thanks so much. Cheers, Tez. On your cane. Oh, Let's mate. get a win, mate. Go up the baggers. You know it. All about Cade Simpson. Talk to me, my friend. Two questions, so to speak. When you look at this logo, who do you who do you think of straight away? Who do you see? Kate Simpson. When you see a heart and soul running through the defence, running forward, putting his ass on the line, who do you think? Kate Simpson. I went to the footy as a ten year old slash eleven year old. He was there. Week in, week out. When I found out he was retiring, I couldn't believe it. I hadn't been as emotional, maybe even maybe as disappointed if I, if a retirement was happening when Craig Bradley retired or was when he was forced to retire in 2002. This is going to be a rough ride Saturday night up at the Gabba, and I expect to hear when I watch the game on Saturday night that the Calvin supporters up there, Riley included, the Hegarty sisters, you name it, I want to hear them give their voice to this ground, to him, to this game against the Lions. I want us to drown out the Lions. Mm. My favourite moment that Kate Simpson, that I saw with Kate Simpson, 2016, Horse Adelaide, Eddie Had Stadium, Simpson's 250th, Jamo's 150th, 150th. Simpson left the ground in tears, as did I, because he gave everything that game, and I couldn't believe we got over the line for it. I had Carlton supporters around me, consoling me. Hugging me. I want to see that again this Saturday night. Spot on, mate. There's going to be <laughs> many of us will be crying. I think. I think we'll all have a bit of a tear in the eye on Saturday when it's all said and done. That's right. And you know, I talk to my Carlton supporting cousin quite regularly. She's going to be. I reckon she's going to be in tears as well, Terry. There's going mm. to be plenty of tears shed. Mm. Good on you, mate. Thanks for sharing. No problem at all. And to the Kelton players, before I, before I go, I know that everybody else has said it in front of me, but we mean it. Do your job against the Brisbane Lions at the Gabba. Send him out a winner. We do not want to, we do not want to be berating you guys after this game. 
we had our chance. We did that against Adelaide. Reverse that now against the Lions, please. Well said, mate. Thank you, Terry. Steve, you said. Hey, Tez. How you? Hey, Daniel. What's happening, my man? Um, I was just giving my thoughts to Cade. Yes. So, I was at one game, the Collingwood game, where I mean, at the Adelaide game, um, the time that he kicked, like, he kicked the goal, I was like, this boy can do everything. He can kick goals. He can go in the midfield if he wants. He can kick long goals, everything. And then when he got knocked out, like, he broke his draw, I, I was like, this bloke is a hell of a – he's a gun. Like, I'm going to miss him, and we all do. The club is proud of him. Everyone's proud. I, I don't know how to describe it. It's really hard. Yeah, he's like, a, he, he, there's a little bit of us in him, isn't there? Yeah. Like, I'm only 13, and I'm going to miss him because I've only known him for, like, five years. Like, every time when I see him kick it out, I'm like, I know he's going to, like, go long, go hard. The tackles, the kicks, the goals, the memories, gone. Yeah. All gone. Very well said, my man. Thanks so much for jumping on. Cheers, Terry. Have a good one. See you, mate. You too, buddy. You too. Jake Horvath with the 10. Surely I get a free Simo Guernsey. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> with 10 bucks, I reckon I can hook you up, mate. <laughs> uh, who have I got here? Hello. Hi. How you going, bud? What's um, happening? Good. I didn't think Talk to me about to Kate on. Simpson. What's your favourite Kate Simpson moment? Uh, so many of them. I can't even choose. Um. Maybe the funniest moment would probably be this year when Eddie Kerno um, kicked the ball right into his face. He got him a good one, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny because it's 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 funny because he, he kicked the ball into his face and most people probably would have come off. I don't think Simo did. I think he stayed on the field. Yeah, and that just shows, like, his courageousness of... He, like, even if, I don't know, even if he gets knocked out or something, he'll always be back in the next, yeah. I don't know, few weeks or something. Yeah. No, well said, mate. Are you, uh, are you going to miss, you, who do you think is going to be the, the next heart and soul player? Well, I don't know. I think, um, well, when Murphy's gone and Betsy's gone, I don't even know anymore. Yeah. Like, those are our main players who, like, kind of, like, bring us together as a team. Yeah. Um, well said, mate. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining. And uh, I love the Carlton stuff in the background. You have a great night. I'm, and I'm, even, in... wear, I'm even wearing his long oh, sleeves. Look at you go. you got the long yeah. sleeves on as well. <laughs> yeah. Good on you, bud. Have a great one. Thanks. See ya. See ya, mate. <laughs> Jake Horvath with $100. This will change your mind. Jesus Christ, Jake. Thank you very much. Hey. Josh. How are we, mate? Mate, we're all right. It's been a couple of days since you and I had a chat. It's a bit more yeah. bit more <laughs> lovely tonight. Talk to me yeah. about your favourite Kate Simpson moment. Um. Well, first of all, I say how cool to see, like, 13-year-olds of the Carlson, like, all over the room. That's just awesome. But, um... Like, there's so much about Kate Simpson, the love, I guess, like, you know, since I've, like, I was started watching in 2006, when I was a little five-year-old, and, like, I just, you know, I always see effort. I remember the Port Adelaide game in 2008 where he kicks um, the goal to put us in front. I remember, like, little six, seven-year-old me screaming at the telly because, you know, I hadn't seen many wins in my time at that point. And, like, I remember... Even as far as recently, but like I can go back countless times where he's run back with the flight of the ball, took a mark, even if we're 60 points down or 50 points up, like game's done, run back with the flight of the ball, put his body on the line. And even when he broke his jaw, somebody else I think said it like you wouldn't have thought that like he was 
very badly injured the way he kind of just after it happened he got to the bench and it was kind of like you know maybe he's okay because he just doesn't look like he doesn't milk an injury he doesn't do anything like that he's just tough as they come i think that's so important that's why everyone loves him yeah no very well said mate i think um i you know i remember and this is just me sort of going on my own little waffle now but i remember when i first started watching him when my memory kicks in, um, at this point he was more of a midfielder slash wing winger wingman, and um, I just remember how quick he was. Um, yeah. And then, like I, I, you know, it's I, it, it kind of dawned on me today when when Dan sent me the the video that he made, and I was looking through it and watching how quick he was, and I was like, he lost it. He lost a step. He definitely did. He wasn't as quick, obviously, but yeah. he evolved. There was a seamless evolution in his game where he went from quick dynamic midfielder who could kick goals and um, win the outside ball to tough, courageous, hard um, player. And, you know, it's just a testament to him and, and what he's been able to do. I remember even last year, I think it was against the Saints in round 22. Um, there was like a couple, like he's, I don't remember the, the player, but he just shrugs off this young player and outpaces him as mm-hmm. like a, a 35-year-old man at the time. And I was just like... He showed those glimpses of what he used to do, and I was just like, it's insane how, you know, somebody who's that age, a lot of them slow down. And obviously he had, but see, he still had that spring in his step when he needed to. And he, boy, I guess it was a good role model for the young boys. I would love him to stay as some kind of form in the club because he could really teach some of those boys about, you know, putting 110% in every week. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, well said, mate. Well said. Thanks yeah. for uh, Thanks for coming on and sharing. No worries, mate. Uh, hopefully, I'll be happier on Saturday night. I'm sad, but happier. <laughs> Fingers crossed, mate. Yeah. Take it easy. Right. Catch you. See ya. Hey, hey, Shannon. Hello. How are you doing? Hey. Yeah, good. How are you? I'm great. Um, you know, this is a bit. This is this has chirped me up a little. Like, I'm sad, but when you when you keep when we keep filtering through the the happy memories and the great memories of Simo. I mean, how can you not smile? He's a legend. He is a legend. I'm wearing an old school uh, Simo badge with the long hair. Is that where these long mop? It is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I'm also representing the cheer squad tonight wearing his uh, T-shirt. But, yep. uh, yeah, no, um, what a sad day. <laughs> it is. It is. It's, it's a sad day. It's, it's a changing of the guard. It's a... End of an era. I think Rocco summed it up perfectly. You know, Simpson was the conduit between, um, you know, the great Carlton team that was. And uh, obviously we, we fell into the salary cap issues and he was the, you know, the, he, he really represents the last of, of the players who had come from that era, really. I know Murphy and that kind of a few years after afterwards. But, yeah, it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm sad, but I'm also very excited because his legacy will never be forgotten and it's going to live on. And it's going to give an opportunity for the next club legend to emerge. So, um, having said that, talk to me about your favourite. Yeah, talk to me about your favourite moment, game. There's so many, I know. I know. So, well, I've been through Simmer's entire career because I'm, what, nearly 30. So, I was, what, 11, 12 when he first started. So, I've pretty much seen everything. So, um, I can't go past. Um, I was watching the Carlton highlights package before and I was watching, there was one game in Adelaide where we were playing Port and he ran into 50, kicked the goal on the left and then turned to the crowd and just went with his fingers. It was just the greatest thing I've ever seen. He's just the epitome of the Carlton Football Club. Like when you read our logo, like it's Simpson, it's Simo, it's it's just, what what else can you say about him? Like my my old man, he's been a Carlton member for 60 plus years. And one of his good mates said when Simo was drafted, this kid's no good. My old man turned to him and said, you watch. You just watch this kid. And look now, look, 340-something games later, he is a legend of the club and going out on a sad note. But like everyone said before me, please, please turn up because I do not want to be screaming at my TV for them to do something for this bloke because this bloke has put absolutely everything on the line like look at the size of him he's a stick and he he backs up for the flight of the ball he gets crunched he, he got hit by a wellingham that's not go there that's still a very sore spot but 
Simo to me is probably the greatest player that I've seen in my time. Yeah. I can't, I can't, apart from Mark Murphy, of course, which you know my affinity with Mark. Um, it's more Simo is just the epitome of Carlton. I can't yeah, say it. No, I can't, well said, I can't you know, be more clear. <laughs> I had a, I had a, I have a, had a vision of the, yesterday of um, us. You know, we're going to carry him off after the game, obviously. And my main thing, and everyone has said it tonight. I don't want to see the photo of him being carried off after a loss, and he's upset because it's been a poor effort. Look, like. Please, yeah. please don't let him lose. Like, don't let him go on like that. Please. No, I, I, I'm a hundred percent with you on that. If the boys don't turn up and he and he gets carried off after a, a loss, I'll be pissed. But like, if we if we lose, but we give effort and we give heart, fair enough. But if we give what we gave against Adelaide in the first half, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be so pissed. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so pissed. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, no, nah, thank you so much for coming on and sharing. No worries. No worries. Go Blues. You know it. Uh, Jake Horvath has, has thrown in another 50. He's a madman. Thanks very much, Jake. Um, I'll speak to you after the show. Hey, champion, what's happening? Uh, not much. Um, CMO. Massive Talk to me. Like, I follow Carlton ever since I was born. And he's been all first when I watch my first game. He's always been my favourite player. He puts his heart on the line. So I, I was at school today and I gone on to my iPad to look what time it was. And it says, I've seen uh, Simpson announce his retirement. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I was so sad. Like, really sad. It was. It was. Yeah. It's. It's bittersweet because we need. Um, we need. Uh, you know, we need someone to not replace him. I don't think anyone's going to replace him, um, but we do yeah. need someone to carry on the the way that he goes about it. Well, we, really, we need all of them to to do that, don't we? Yeah. Like on yeah. The, the effort that they showed the first quarter of Adelaide was shocking. Like jogging to make a tackle is not good enough. That's not what Simo would have done. No, he. He every every week puts his hundred hundred and ten percent, and that I think that's what every player on the football club should do. Yeah, well said, mate. You spoke yeah, very thanks. well. Thanks, thanks so much for joining. Yeah, see ya. See ya, bud. Yo, Saba. Hello, Terry. How are you? Oh, uh, you know, I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay. How are you doing? It's, it's sad, honestly. He's He's been here for pretty much my entire life, really. And yeah. It's, well, what's your favourite memory? Let's let's uh, let's celebrate. Oh, what's your favourite so Simo memory? Give me one. That spoil against Hawthorne 2017, that will always go down as his best moment. He's had those... Goals to win the game, but that's just classic Simpson. He doesn't care if he hurts himself. He doesn't care if he hurts anyone else. He's just there to get the job done week in and week out. He's so good, honestly. Yeah, I think there's another one against Geelong. It might have been in Dan's highlights packages um, where he goes with the fly of the ball and Tom Hawkins is coming the other way. So just to follow on from what you just said. Yeah, oh, it's... Sad, honestly. Like, this is literally my wallpaper. And you can bet that this is going to stay on for the next year. I can bet you a million dollars on it. Because <laughs> this guy right here, if we don't win next week, I'm going to be so annoyed. He deserves all of it. He deserves all of it. And sadly, he couldn't win a premiership for us, but he deserved it. 340 games. What he did was insane. And I just really hope that our boys turn up and start start well and finish well for Simo. Yeah. And I want him to be yeah. walking out with him, two other Carlton players. I want him to have the biggest smile on his face that he's ever had because I was crying mm. when I heard that he's retiring. Honestly, yeah. he's he's amazing. Yeah. Well said, mate. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. See ya. See ya, bud. Jake's gone again with a 50. <laughs> Well, we. Uh, oh, hello, Mark. Can you hear me? 
I can hear you, mate. I can see you and hear you. Mike, can you hear me? Yes, mate. I can hear you and see you. Wait, I can't hear you. <laughs> Hello? Hello, mate. Hello, mate. No, I can't hear you. Okay, we'll pass on to the next person. <laughs> hey, Orlando Clark. I can't hear you. No, cannot hear you. Hey, Tez, can you hear me? I can hear a lot of things coming from your side, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, mate. Um, uh, good to be on the show. Um, had to join when obviously I saw on Facebook that you were sort of hosting this tonight. I uh, had to make sure that I joined. But, um, yeah, look, I suppose there's so many um, uh, instances where, you know, Simo's just displayed his, his courage and he's just humble. And uh, you actually said <laughs> the, the, mo the moment you said, what's, what's the, the, the thing that you remember that's the uh, mark that he took, uh, that one he was going back in flight? Um, against uh, obviously Tommy Hawkins, so but yeah, he's just you know, he's the heart and soul. Um, I think from my point of view, um, every time he put that jumper on, he represented Carlton. And if we only had that from each and every player at Carlton, we would be miles and miles ahead. So I think the, the Carlton players, yes, they've got to, you know, do it for him. And and you know, if we don't win, at least, at least put in a four quarter performance. Um, but just rep represent the club and, and have the same heart. It's he's he's you can't replace a Simpson. You, it's it's impossible. I originally said Walsh, but you know um, because he's just obviously shown um, you know leadership at, at such a young age. But yes, there's only one Simpson, and you know with Carlton, you think of the greats, you know uh, Kernahan and and Bradley and. Um, Bruce Dahl and everyone like that. But, you know, he probably, Simpson didn't have the accolades that they probably achieved in the premierships, but he's a great, great player and he'll be missed. Yeah. Very well said, mate. I appreciate you coming on and sharing. Thank you. See you, mate. See you, mate. Mark. Mark. <laughs> Terry. Toza, mate. Talk to me. How are you going? Mate, I'm good. Tell me about your, your favourite uh, I'm pretty sad, to be honest, but it, we've had lots of memories, let's be real. 340 games. Um, I can't pick out, like, one of the best, but oh my god, he he has been our heart and soul of the back line with Doc, I reckon, for the past five so years or something. But every like he would always put in so much effort every game, like continuous. Like there wouldn't be a week where he would have a bad game. He would always be in the play doing something, you know. Um, mm -hmm. what else? He would always put in like his best effort. Every week, um, it's just it's sad, but um, I feel like they were saying that he was um, he signed off, but I feel like he was kind of forced to go at the same time to get fresh players in the back line. But yeah, he's probably like my favorite player um, for the club that I've that I've known of. Um, yeah, I'm not, not to say it's just, it's just amazing. Just yeah, dead income. <laughs> no, we love him. We love him to death, yeah. mate. Thanks very much for uh, coming and sharing. No worries. Cheers. Thanks again. S see you, mate. All good. Yeah. Good day, Terry. Yeah. What up, bro? Oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm just really gonna miss him. Just in general, being out there, you know, like I'm turning sixteen, and to think that. You know, he was playing before I'd even been born and he's just not going to be there. Like, just I've gotten so used to just thinking that he would just be there, you know. Um, but I think I just wanted to say that he's one of those guys who 
I feel like always just played his role and he, he didn't focus on trying to be anything more than he could have, if you know what I mean. Like mm. he, you know, he was never that flair top sort of player, you know, but he would always just come in, do his role, you know, show his courage, go back with the flight. And I think it just shows that, you know, players who are willing to do that can have just amazing careers. Like it doesn't always have to be that absolute superstar player. Like he's just shown how successful you can be by um, doing the simple things well and just playing your heart out for your club. Yeah. Well said, mate. Very well said. Yeah. Well, who's okay. – uh, if you had to give – because Jono was – Jono, who obviously um, is the, the mastermind behind this show – um, yeah. Tonight he was he was asking like who who could possibly be no one's going to be Simo but who like there's always that one guy oh, who, within who each could team re- almost replace him to play his role. Um, gee, I, I'm thinking for next season. I mean, Nick Newman's got to be you know as close. I mean, not in terms of sort of courage and that, but stylish left foot. I mean, you'd think that he'll play. Simo's sort of role, but I mean, in the last couple of games, he's been running up along the wing a little bit too. So I've noticed, especially last game, he was bringing a little bit of attacking flair, which um, we haven't seen for a while from him. It was a bit of a flashback to his earlier days, but yeah, gee, maybe I don't think Lockie O'Brien's got it in him. I wish he did, but I'm not not convinced. Um, Stock is a bit big to play a Simo role, so. Yeah, probably Nick Newman for the for the first couple of years and not sure about after that. But yeah, don't think anyone's, you know, gonna run out with that sort of passion and courage for a while. But I hope I hope the guys who still are playing, you know, just take a little piece of his courage and add it to their own would make a huge difference, I think. Yep. Yeah, spot on, mate. Thanks so much for sharing. All right, cheers. Cheers, Ledge. Third time lucky, Mark. Are we there? Hello? Yes, hello. Hello. Why can't I not hear you? This. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hello? Tanush. Uh, hello? Yo, Shad, next. Uh, hello? Hello, hello. 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 How are you? Good, mate. How are you? Um, yeah, a bit disappointed, but it is what it is. He's a bloody legend and, yeah, something that they got to play this weekend, like O'Brien, McGovern. I hope they don't play. Like, just he's put in 341 games of pure effort and courage, so you got to put something back. And I was watching the um, Heart and Soul documentary of him today and the – and about the first minute of the half, I think, of the documentary was, yeah, shingles down my spine, I think. they. It's just, they got to put an effort for this legend of the club, I think. Mm-hmm. Any, any particular moments of his that stand out for you? Goals, marks, tackles? Um, I think 2015 against Geelong, he took these two incredible marks. I think he highlighted when Tom Hawkins came sprinting at him and, yeah. And the probably Hawthorne moment when he was like five metres behind and then he just lunged forward. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much uh, for coming on and sharing. All right. Thanks for having me. See you later. See you later. Yo, yo. Terry? Yes, mate. G'day, mate. How's it going? It's good. I like your hat. Where's that from? Uh, 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 got it on the, uh, for you on uh, Instagram. <laughs> mate, good to see you representing. Yeah, it's all good. Talk to me, mate. Talk to me about Simo. Uh, just lost for words, to be honest. He's just a, he's a club hero. You can't, it's not really a bad word you can say about him, to be honest. Any particular moments for you? Games, moments, milestones? Oh, I know, just the fact that he puts his heart out on the field and just so courageous. 
Yeah. Given his size and everything, uh, what's it going to be like without him? What are we going to do? I don't know. Uh, hopefully, Zach Williams in the side can replicate replicate that uh, small little halfback run off the thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Nice, mate. Well, uh, appreciate you coming on and representing. Nice hat. And yeah. uh, I'll uh, I'll speak to you throughout the day, throughout the week. Yep. See you, mate. Oh, hello, Terry. Hey, Ethan Brennan. How are you, mate? Yeah, pretty good. It's a yeah. Talking about Simo. Oh, I, there's not enough words to describe him. He's just he's just an awesome player. I'm just really going to miss him. What are you going to miss about him? Oh, just his courage and just. I know, I know. People say he's not a flashy player, but I, I just, I just know, I just loved watching him. Yeah. Who's going to be the next heart and soul player at the club now that we lose two of them this year? Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe some of our just young blokes just might need to step up and be more like a captain. Yep. Maybe Cripps. Like, I mean, I know he's been good and everything, but poorer season. Maybe next year, just. Yeah, fair enough, mate. Fair enough. Thanks very much for sharing. Okay. See ya. See you, mate. We'll try and get Jono back in when we can and, and wrap ah. this up soon, I reckon. There Mr. Is. Sebastiane! Good evening, my friend. How are we doing? Two nights in a row, mate. I missed yeah, you. Well, mate. I, had, yeah, I had separation anxiety. Back to back, mate. Yeah. Well, oh, mate, I've, what, what, do you, what do you say that hasn't already been said? Just... It's, it's I, I don't, you know, people are saying it's a sad day for the football club and, you know, we, we can sit there and sulk and, and say, you know, geez, it's not going to be great to to not see the number six, you know, flying going back with the flight of the ball anymore. But I, I think the, the better thing to do is just celebrate, you know, what, what a great career he's had uh, from an individual point of view. Obviously, from a team perspective, he wasn't able to achieve you know what I'm sure what I'm what what he desired to to set out to achieve, which was, which was a premiership. Unfortunately, we couldn't deliver that to him. But I think he got the the most out of his career from an individual perspective. You know, and and it's uh, he's a testament to the statement that uh, size doesn't equal courage. You know, there's uh, there's nothing of the fella. You know, he's he's, he's built like a rake, but. Uh, He's, uh, he's got the heart of a lion and uh, he's, he's very, very courageous. And he, he just embodies everything everything that uh, that the monogram on the front of the logo means, Terry. Mm -hmm. No, he does, mate. He does. He does. And Jono puts a good question. Who's going to be the heart and soul player when you lose Cruiser and Simo in, in, in one season? Mm. I don't really know. I don't really know. I think I think I like the Jack Silvani name mm. getting thrown up. I think he plays, plays with a little bit of it. But... Um, yeah. I think you know what it is with these heart and soul players. I don't think they're ever your like like Simo was a garden, like he was a star, but he, he was never the one. He was never the match winner, or he was never the guy in the limelight, the bloke who was on the front of the papers or anything like that. He was always, you know, he was always in the background, just every week doing what he had to do, um, you know. And, and I think it'll be it'll be someone like that. It might be someone like a Jack. It might be someone like a. You know, who, who knows who it could be? It could be maybe a Williamson or someone like that. You, we, we don't know. Um, it, it's going to be one of these younger kids, I think. Obviously, mm -hmm. someone who's been there from the very start, and that, that that's how it has to be. You know, it has to be a start-to-finish job. You draft them, they stay in the club forever, hopefully maybe win a premiership instead this time. Um, and may, maybe Simo might be part of our next flag. He, he might still be inside the club. So whether or not he wins one as, as a coach or something, who, who knows? The future will tell, but yeah, it's it's. Uh, I, I don't think we should say it as a sad day. Just just celebrate, you know, the the great things that he's done for the for the football club and and the individual career. Mm. Yeah, no, spot on, mate. Spot on. Yeah. Very very well, well said. What's the uh, what's the overall sentiment been like with uh, with the fans tonight, mate? Well, you know what? It's been it's very been very similar. We started off mm. with a lot of fire, a lot of fire. Fire, um, really? Yeah. It, in, in the sense of if those boys don't show oh yes yes, you know, yes. some determination this this Saturday night yeah. um 
in you know paying their respects to him, yeah. um, then there'll be there'll be there'll be hell to pay. It seems. Um, it, it seems yeah. like the the collective. Are, um, and I think the players in the club will all feel the same. You know, we have to put in a good showing for him as we send him off um, because he deserves it. And I think I spoke to you about it last night. I said I had the vision, kept cheering him off. I don't want to see him crying. Yeah. Sad tears. You know, he might yeah. still cry, but sad tears. Yeah. Yeah. Tears after a dub would be nice. Yeah, that's right. Exactly right. Exactly then right. All, so, then they can all go and get pissed after the game. Yes. Then they can carry on. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, pleasure doing it again tonight, mate. Pleasure having you, mate. Have a good one. No worry. Chat soon. Enjoy. See ya. Hey, Terry. Shout out, well, mate. Um, now, we've got quite a few people in the waiting room, and I think they're going to hunt us down and kill us if they don't get to say a piece. So, okay. like, someone really desperate, they don't want to miss the moment, they've said, um, okay. or miss their chance. What about we just machine gun through, give them you know, 15, 20 seconds to say one thing. And and then we've got Jono waiting as well to, to good. wrap up with you. Sounds right. good. I'll, I'll do I'll my best. Someone. I'll do my very best. Hi. Hi. Lola and friend. Hello. And Zena. Yeah. And Zena. Hello, hello. Talk to me, ladies. Talk to me about your favourite Simo moment. Uh, well, we were talking before we got on the show and we were saying that our favourite Simo moment, it's quite recent against Bulldogs when he did the dive and we were we were winning by like 40 points. There was no need. We, we could have easily cost the goal, but he still put his heart and soul onto the field and he just dived and saved the goal. Like there was no need, but he did it anyway, you know. I feel like that describes Kate Simpson as a player. He did it. There was no need, but he did it anyway, you know. Yeah, it just shows like he's a true like tribute to like the club and like our like history and like it's really like good to see and like I hope like all the young players and stuff like they can see like how like real and how like good he actually was and is and like he's a true champ and like when I go like, with my dad to watch the footy like my every time he touches the ball he's like oh he's like, a champ, you're a champ you, know? you know like even when we watch it on TV this year you know. Every time he touches the ball, we're like, what a legend. Like, even if he didn't even, like, lost, he say he lost the ball, still, like, he's a legend, you know. Nothing changes. He's just a pure legend. And he fights. Yeah. And he fights. Like, he's been through thick and thin at the football club, you know. And he never he never left. He's, he's loyal to that. He's loyal to at its best. Yeah. Spot on, ladies. Spot on. Thanks so much for, for sharing. Yeah, have a nice evening. You too. Have a great one. Bye bye. Yeah, bye. Bye. Legends, love it. You love to see it. I love you, be that bully. I love you, be that bully. Surely it works now. Well, I can hear ya. Well, mate, talk to me about your favourite Kate Simpson moment. <sighs> I'm in mourning. I'm just in mourning, but um, I, it just had to be done um, for the greater good because it's a business. you got to do what's good for business. But it, to make this quick, fourth time lucky, jeez, missed out, a, missed out on the medal there. Anyways, um, no, nah, it's all good. Um, favourite moment, mate? Favourite moment? Favourite moment? Look, I'm actually going to go his 150th game, which he was obviously part of uh, what was arguably – the greatest mark of the year that didn't get given, which was Andrew Walker when we smashed the Bombers in 2011. And you felt that that year was, you know, a premiership that uh, unfortunately that went missing. But um, I, I thought, uh, you know, it was just a humbled, loyal contributor that he's obviously poured his heart and soul into this club. Um, it's obviously a religion. And as I said, not only I'm in mourning, but at the same time, I'm I'm so happy for the bloke that he has given everything that he has got. We know that it's obviously not been the greatest era that he's been part of, but um, you know what? When you look at those different names like your Burgoyne's and Selwoods that have been able to have success and then and they've played the same amount of games roughly as what Simo has, but it's good that the key word loyalty remains, and I really hope that for the the current group that are there can hopefully follow in his footsteps 
and then we can also go uh, places at the same time, Terry. But also, I, I do want to have a little shout out to um, a girl that I'm wanting to put out to. Her name's uh, Stephanie Balbasis. She is a big fan of Cade Simpson. Uh, did all my uh, AFL Victoria days um, with her through a, um, a, a sporting recreation traineeship. Just wanted to give her a little shout out um, to her. But to wrap it all up, look, we know we're out of the race. As much as it was still hurting from Sunday, all I'm going to say is this. This game is almost as big as any other game in probably, I reckon, in the last, probably ever since his debut. Why I'm saying this? Because this is about not just pride, it's honour and integrity and showing the respect for someone that had put in his blood and guts week in, week out. I don't think he was ever dropped because he was always playing his role with the great utmost respect and it'd be just nothing more that we've just not only got to win this game, but we've just got to put in as much effort as possible. If it happens to be a freakish goal or a bit of passage of great brilliance of play that ends up getting the job done for them, uh, Brisbane that is, but look at the same time, just give it everything you've got boys. You've got nothing to lose now. So again, Simo, we love you. Go the Blues. Make it happen in game 342. Good on you, mate. Well said. Right. And How's we that? get there, Jono. We get there, mate. That was fantastic. Mate, that was incredible. And well done to everyone who got on tonight and shared their thoughts about the great man. And I, there's, there's a... Hell of a lot of love out there for that skinny old man, and we're we're all gonna miss him. Hundred percent. Yeah, I think um, I uh, I was quite surprised. I got to say, I thought people would have a few more memories uh, mm. to, to bring up, but it seemed like the same the same couple kept coming up. But that, I mean, that Essendon goal, unbelievable. That was, um, that, was that was brilliant. That was, that was it. Made his best. That was. All that he could do. Um, I remember early, early days. So he went, he went the first three games without getting a stat, and then in his first actual stat, he took a mark and kicked a goal. So his first kick was actually a goal. It just happened to be in his fourth game in his second season. <laughs> so that's that's kind of funny, and you know, it's just a, a lot of a lot of people said it because it's not the crazy. You know, Cade Simpson. You know, a, a freakish mark or a goal. It's the little things. You know, like his spoils, his going back with the flight, his getting on his bike and doing his job. That's the little things that you love from a man, and it's those little one percenters that really make a club great and a great of a club. And Cade Simpson did all that and he's had all of that for 341 games and there's one more to go and you can bet your bottom dollar, Terry, that he's going to give absolutely everything and more on Saturday night and I, God, hope and it's been a sentiment to that's been shared here tonight and across everyone that we hope that he's got 21 players that run out next to him that give him absolutely everything because he deserves absolutely everything and more on Saturday mm. night. It's it's going to be sad not to be there and I'm bloody jealous of you, Riley, and every other Queensland bagger that gets the opportunity to get to the Gabba this week and see him off and cheer for us, yell for all of us. I'm sure there'll be a time where we get to honour Simo at the MCG sometime in the near future, but be there for us. And uh, as I said in the opener, this was this was our little chance to tell him, to tell Simo just how much he means to everyone. And I sincerely hope that he knows just how much he means to all of us. Yeah. Well, uh, as I, as Jake throws another 50 in and says baggers, uh, Jono, I want to I want to acknowledge you and thank you uh, because there's no way this show happens tonight 
if you don't send the text through to me earlier today. Um, thank you. Thank you for the idea. Thank you for, um, for you know, using the platform um, for what it's meant to be used for, um, you know, expressing your ideas and whatnot. Uh, it's, it's a great touch. I, I, I wouldn't have thought of it. I honestly, I would not have thought of it. Um, and, uh, mate, I just, I, you know, echoing your sentiments, I hope to bloody God that we, sh we, we go out with a, with a good performance, you know, for the club, because that's probably what Simo would want. He wouldn't want him to go out and have a good performance for him, to, for mm -hmm. him to be proud of. He'd want them to go out and have a good performance for the club and set themselves up for a good preseason and, and next year. And uh, he'll probably not watch any of this because he would hate it. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we have to, you know, us as fans, you know, we it's so funny. You know, you have your heroes growing up and it, they almost become like a fictional character. Uh, and then all of a sudden the human element comes in. Maybe as you get a little older and you, you know, you, you start matching up with the ages and you start becoming older than some players. You know, obviously for us, that's not the case with Simo. He's one <laughs> of the few. He's one of the few. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think we've really captured the uh, the love and emotion um, and, and the respect that the fan base have for him. So that's been fantastic. Credit to you, credit to everyone that came on and um, and expressed themselves. And uh, I guess we'll uh, we'll be sitting in these chairs again on, on Saturday night when we watch the baggers get up. Yeah, we will. And this everyone has an affinity with certain players that come and go. And I don't want to know how many players Kate Simpson's seen come and go through the Carlton Football Club and the number would scare me but there's one thing that's con that's constantly happened is that everyone who I speak to that knows a thing about football and particularly the Carlton Football Club don't have any bad words to say about Kate Simpson and the way he goes about his football yeah. And he's, he's the type of person that I don't know if you'll be able to replace. Well, you will be able to replace a halfback flanker, but you won't be able to replace a Cade Simpson. He's he's a very, very special person. And just, just, just a bit of a story before we wrap it up, Terry. When, when Stephen Silvani played his 300th game for the Garden Football Club, the club called... Bruce Stahl and it's like, Bruce, will you come into the club and do something for SOS, you know, as part of the 300 clubs with John Nichols and Craig Bradley. And Bruce didn't pick up the phone. He did it. And then they called him again when Simo was playing his 300th game and Bruce came in. And it sort of adds to the mystique of Bruce Stahl. And, you know, he's like Simo, is very softly spoken and you don't, see or hear much about him as, you know, bit an aloof character, but is also one of the greatest players in the history of the Carlton Football Club in the game. But for him to step out into the public eye again for Cade Simpson speaks of the volumes and the regard that that man has held within the Carlton Football Club. And I said at the start, I'll say it again, he is the most revered person to go through the Carlton Football Club in that last 20 years, and he will never, ever be forgotten. Yeah. Never, ever. What he, what he does on the field will never be forgotten. Yeah. Oh, actually, you just reminded me, before I wrap this up, Paul Barbaza sent in a text because he's at work. Um, he said, give him a big shout out from me. One of the most courageous, determined, inspiring players I've witnessed in the Navy Blue. Fills my heart with joy and happiness every time I hear his name. A true Carlton champion of the Carlton Football Club. Nothing but love and admiration for the little champ. Simo the warrior of all warriors. Well done in a marvellous career with the old dark Navy Blue. Sorely missed, never forgotten. I salute you. So thanks very much for that, Mr. Barbaza. Jono, thanks very much to you, everyone in the audience. Thanks very much for being a part of it. Shad Daddy, thanks very much for organising things on the back end. Have a great night, everybody, and uh, let's see what happens this Saturday. Go the Mighty Blues, and thank you, Kate Simpson.